This video is a follow-up to a previous video in which we created a stacker function that is uses a common pattern that combines reduce and vstack to apply an arbitrary function to an array. In this video, I want to talk about how we can extend the stacker function. Um, you can see that it's using vstack at the moment, but what if we wanted to use hstack? So the first thing that we can do to achieve that is we can parameterize the stacking function. And let's say we'll put an optional parameter called stack function. And as with all optional parameters, we need to use if is omitted to give it a default value. which we'll create in a moment. Uh, and then the stack function is going to be put in place of where it says vstack. Now at the, at the moment, we've got hstack and vstack available to us in Excel, but we can't pass native functions as parameters to lambdas. So what we have to do is we have to uh, create lambda versions of vstack and hstack. And that's really simple. So we'll do one called v and we'll call it lambda with two parameters because vstack ultimately um, stacks two things on top of each other. And this will just be vstack one, two. And we'll create another one called h, which will be the same thing, except it will be h stack. So those are two very simple Lambda functions that just allow us to use uh, a simple Excel function as a parameter to another Lambda function. So at the moment you can see the call to create the solution to this problem is stacker and then the array and then the row function, which is processor row. So when, when I click save, this is gonna um, stay the same because we've given it an optional stack function uh, but the stack function, if it's omitted, we actually want it to be vstack. So I'm going to put v here. So if the stack function is omitted, we'll use the v lambda, which will essentially say um, we'll use vstack. Otherwise, we'll use what's passed to the stack function, which can be either v or h. So we'll click save and see what it does. Okay, so it's it's done nothing because it's got a default value. But if we want to put the stack function in, we can put v as a function in there and it will produce the same result. But look what happens when I put h. So this is now used h stack instead of v stack. Now it looks a bit stupid because um, the element function or the row function is creating two columns of the name and the tickets, which is exactly what the row function was designed to do. It's not the fault of the stacker or a vstack or hstack that it's it's not designed to really produce sensible results with hstack. So, but what it has done is, is it taken the result of processing each row, Jeff, Yuri, Eric, and it's hstacked them together in the reduce operation. So this actually works, even though it looks a bit silly, this works in the way that it's designed to work. Now, the question is, do, is hstack an appropriate stacking function for this process, for this procedure? Well, no, because the row function, processor row that we created, creates two columns. Now, if we were to transpose processor row, uh, it might make more sense, but it might not. So now that we've got a stacker function that can be either vstack or hstack, the next thing we should consider is whether or not to curry the function. Now, if you don't know what currying is, don't wor worry too much. Uh, I'm going to show you now. So currying is when we have a function which has more than one parameter. And what we do is we assign one or more parameters to another function that wraps the existing function. And uh, you have may, may have uh, seen curried functions in Power Query or in Excel, where you have a set of parentheses with something inside it after the function name. And then immediately after that, you have another set of parentheses with something inside it. So that indicates that the function has been curried. Uh, and let's see how we can do that now. So 
we've got three parameters here, array, row function, and stack function. Now, a, a good idea would be to curry this to remove stack function from this list and put it in its own function. And the way we would do that is wrap the entire thing in another lambda and put stack function as a parameter of that lambda. And just to show you what that means, the stack function is now a parameter of stacker, but the return value of stacker is now the function that applies the row function to the array. So that, that is the only change that needs to be made here. And when I click save, this is gonna, this is gonna turn into an error and I'll show you why. So this is now an error because stacker doesn't have three parameters anymore. What stacker has just one parameter and it can be H or V. It can be the stack function or it can be omitted. So if we omit it, we would type this, which is stacker open close parens. And the return value of that function call will be the Lambda function that I'm highlighting here. So the return value of stacker creates a Lambda function, which of course returns calc in the spreadsheet because well, we haven't given that Lambda function any parameters. So to give the Lambda function parameters, we use another set of parens, and we know now that the parameters of the inner Lambda function are the array and the row function, which we wrote in the previous video, which is process a row. So this function call, which is stacker open close, and then the array and then process a row is, it, is exactly the same as it was before. The difference is that we have curried the stack function into the outer lambda. And you're probably wondering why, why, we would, why would we do that? So here it's produced the correct result. If we put V in here, V is a function that produces the same result. And we put H in here, H is a function that produces the weird looking, but expected H stacked result pre from previously. So why would we do that? Well, one very good reason why we would do that is that if we have a limited number of um, stack functions, we don't want to have to add H or V each time we use this stacker function. So what we can do is define names in the formula var environment. Let's say V stacker is now just equal to stacker V and H stacker is equal to stacker H. So I've now created vstacker and hstacker, which are identical in function with the exception of the, the stack function without rewriting the code, without making it too complicated. It's now just a parameterized change. So vstacker applies stacker using the vstack function and hstacker applies stacker using the hstack function. So if I save that, I can now replace this H stack with H stacker and it produces the same result. And if I replace it with V stacker, it produces the original result. So let's take this one step further. Um, we can curry this further because we've got two uh, parameters in here, array and row function. But what if we have multiple arrays of data to which we want to apply the same stack function and the same row function? Well, if we leave them as two parameters in the inner function, it will become cumbersome after a while, but we can curry the row function into uh, another Lambda. So we can actually put a Lambda in here with the row function and close the parens at the bottom. And of course, uh, if we do that, we will now have three Lambdas each with one parameter. And without saying too much more, the way that this works now will be, just to use stacker, it will be stacker v, and then the row function, which is processor row, and then the array. And because we've curried it to, to three uh, single parameter lambdas, we've got three sets of parentheses, each with one parameter parameter. Now you're probably at this point thinking, well, I mean, I would never do that. That's crazy. Why, why would you even bother? Well, let me explain why. 
um, let's say, let's say we've got let and we want to create, uh, we've got several arrays that need to be processed in the same way, but they're not connected to each other. They might be on different sheets or in different workbooks potentially. So we want to say, say my stacker is, is going to be a function and the function is going to be is a V stacker using processor row. So I've defined this name and the name is the first two element, the first two um, function calls within the stacker function and the return value of this name, my stacker is, oops, let me just, let me just close this. The return value is this function in the middle and that only has a parameter of one array. So now I only need to define that once as my stacker and then processed array one is just my stacker, which is that inner function with the array. And if that's the return value of the let statement, it gives me the same result here. But the benefit of doing it this way is that now, if we've got another array somewhere else, we can have my stacker, which is the same function. Um, and I'm just gonna select some empty cells here. Uh, how many, six? One, two, three, four, five, six. Six empty cells, six empty rows rather. And processed array two. So that's a value because those cells are empty, but just one second. So it's B16 to D21. Let's duplicate this data to B16 to D21. So you can see that the, the call to my stacker for B9 to D14 returns the array and the call to my stacker for B16 to D21, which ostensibly is going to be a different array, uh, also returns the array and then at the end, if we want to, we can stack them both together. Processed array one and processed array two. And just pretend that the second array has different data in it. We've now been able to use, you can see that it's all stacked on top of each other. We've now been able to use this curried function, which defines that inner function using the vstacker, the processor row row function, to call a function my stacker and then use my stacker on the first array and then use my stacker on the second array and then v stack them together. And of course, you know, we don't really need to give these names because they're only used once. So actually we can just do this. And then things become a lot simpler. So that is some of the benefits of currying your functions. It's not always appropriate and it's probably not needed as much as I'm saying that it is. Um, but if you start to get even moderately complex modules or workbooks, understanding the, the whys and the whens of currying is going to take you a lot further than you think. And that is the end of the video.